There is magic on stage where monkeys fly and broomsticks levitate. The work of Susan Hilferty, who won a Tony for designing the costumes, and Eugene Lee, who won a Tony for his magnificent scenic design. Their work is extraordinary. What I think was so interesting about Eugene is that he came in with a model at the very first meeting, which is pretty close to what we see on the stage now. There were lots of changes in detail, but his concept is the concept that you see. I remember when we first walked in and saw the sets, your mouth drops to the floor, that's pretty much how it was. There's a lot of scenery that's built that the audience really never sees. There's lots of staircases and things to hold up some of the uh, actual pieces of scenery. There's always twice as much scenery on stage than people ever see just to make the scenery that we do see as wonderful as it is. If you have a great costume, all you have to do is show up. It's one of the great secrets of acting. And Susan Hilferty has created extraordinary costumes for this show. A costume designer is a storyteller. I help create character. Everything I do has to be done in relationship to an actor. It's kind of like weaving. I've established the broad fabric about its kind of colors, where I want it to go, ultimately what my vision of the, the story is. And then each of the actors become a thread in this piece of fabric. So I have to work with them as they figure out what this character is about. I'm not just looking at their clothes and saying, is the hat right, are the gloves right? I've got to constantly be asking myself, is this the right character choice? I got choked up looking in the mirror because it's just all the man hours that go into it and the beating and it's so magnificent. I was like, are you sure <laughs> I get to wear this? <laughs> we needed to create sort of this fantasy world with the makeup and with the hair and everything. I took basically the sketches that Susan had done and I looked at the picture of the person that was playing the role and then sort of sat there and just created a look that would work for them but that was a little kind of funky and not so much just like a regular theatrical makeup. Wicked is a challenge wig-wise because everything is so individual. We still sit and make the wig like they did in the 18th century. And you're maybe using two or three hairs at a time. There are over 90 wigs in the show. And one of the men, I think he has six wig changes. And so even the men have wigs. Okay, like my wig? no. When I first got involved with the show, I didn't know where the choreography fit in because it was so unusual. I thought that this had to go more into the modern dance form instead of Broadway theatrical dance. So it was really like taking each character into consideration and finding some sort of quirky style. When you're dancing. Steven Schwartz, he did a wonderful job with the music. I defy you to, to listen to this score and not start bopping your head, tapping your feet. It's very, very infectious. I came across some of my early sketches the other day, and I noticed that the tune for Defying Gravity was there. So I think pretty early, I had a, a notion of what I was going to do. His music is so smart. It's just a pleasure and a dream to sing his music. In all the bars, no wizard that there is or was is ever 